smart devices have invaded every part of our lives. Whether we're talking about smartphones, smart TVs, smart locks, smart faucets, smart grills, even smart bongs. Yes, that one does exist. And all manner of other devices, for better or mostly worse providing many different styles of interaction from buttons to touch controls to voice controls. But the problem is, when you introduce software into a system, you're now introducing a new point of failure. Not only hardware failure, but also software bugs. And Amazon, like many companies out there, offers smart speakers, which do have some level of control through touch controls, and you can get standalone, like, you know, physical remotes for them, but most of the control is done through your voice with Amazon Alexa. At least it's supposed to be voice. CVE 2023 33 248, which is not a very exciting sounding name, but it is an exciting vulnerability. Amazon Alexa software version this number right here, on Echo Dot second generation and third generation devices, potentially allows attackers to deliver security relevant commands via an audio signal between 16 and 22 kilohertz, often outside the range of human adult hearing. Commands at these frequencies are essentially never spoken by authorized actors. I would argue just flat out never spoken, but I'll show you why in just a bit but a substantial fraction of the commands are successful. Now, I would imagine many of you are not audio people and probably have no idea what 16 to 22 kilohertz actually means. Like, what does that sound like? Well, let's look at this on a graph. So what you're seeing right now is a frequency response graph. If you've ever looked at a review for a random pair of headphones, you've likely seen one of these. It shows you the amplitude at different audio frequencies. We don't care about the amplitude though, we only care about the frequencies. So, I'm going to be speaking in averages, nothing I'm saying is a hard set rule, there is individual variation. So the human audible range is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. That's why it's what we use on an audio frequency graph. There's no reason to test headphones outside of what people can actually hear. Now the lower the number of hertz you have, the deeper the sound gets, eventually becoming a bassy sound. The higher the number of hertz you have, the higher the sound gets, becoming a treble sound. Now, adult males tend to speak in the 80 to 180 hertz range, and adult females in the 165 to 255 hertz range. But when we're talking about the high end, not like that high end, but the really high end, this tends to drop off as you age. By the time you're 18, a lot of people can't hear above 19 kilohertz. But by the time you are 50, a lot of people drop down to about 12 kilohertz. Above this range is we start seeing things like dog whistles at 23 to 54 kilohertz, dolphins echolocation at 40 to 130 kilohertz, commercial fish finders at 50 to 200 kilohertz, and all the way into the megahertz range we have ultrasound at 2 to 12 megahertz. And with the exception of dog whistles, many of which can be tuned down into the human audible range, those things cannot be heard whatsoever. But when we're talking about 16 to 22 kilohertz, even that is just outside of the range for many people. Now, as it currently stands, these are the only two Amazon devices known to work. There is a GitHub here that has a CSV that lists out other devices that can be tested. These are the only ones that have been tested. I would imagine these are the only ones the developers like had on hand. But it's entirely possible that other devices in this lineup are also affected, especially those devices running at the same version of software. But here's the fun thing, whilst this is a new CVE from just a few days ago, this is not a new style of attack. This is what is known as a NUIT, a near ultrasound inaudible trojan. Whilst being a little bit cluttered, these diagrams do a good job of demonstrating the problem. We have NUIT1 and NUIT2, very creative names for very creative differences. So NUIT1 is when a device attacks itself. So you have a single device and you have a malicious app 
a malicious audio file, a malicious website, and then that is played on that device and it is used to run an audio command on the same device. New it too is a little bit more concerning. This is where you do the same thing, but attack another device. So you have a computer and then you have a smart speaker somewhere else in your house. And on this computer, you go to a malicious website, you have a malicious app, it plays the audio file, and then it runs the Trojan on that speaker. The reason this is a problem is because then you can expand that outside of your home. You could potentially do this in some form of public area. Now, this particular CVE is about Amazon devices with Alexa, but don't think you are completely safe from Newit just because you don't use Alexa. This style of attack has been demonstrated on Siri, Google Assistant, and Cortana, and they have a bunch of videos down here doing it on iPhones, on Galaxy devices, on Cortana, with one phone between two different phones. Some of these may have been patched already, but this is not an attack that is limited to just Alexa. This is something that is potentially possible on every single voice assistant out there, in various different forms, with various different levels of damage that is possible. Whilst a lot of these tests are done with no additional sound playing, there are some tests here where they embed the sound into background music. So in these earlier ones, you could possibly hear a really high pitch whistle. In this one, absolutely no chance whatsoever. Is it 100% successful on every single device? Absolutely not but the fact that it is ever successful in the first place is a really serious problem. This testing is being done by a very small group. It is entirely possible a lot more can be done, but they just haven't gotten around to testing that. For many of us, avoiding this problem is as simple as just not enabling voice control. And if you do use voice control, only enable it upon a button press. And if someone manages to time running a Trojan with you pressing a button, maybe deal with your stalker problem first. But I would be lying if I said that voice control hasn't been a massive boon for accessibility. There are a lot of people out there who simply don't have the ability to use a device in a traditional manner. Some of those people might like using weird esoteric devices, but other people might prefer the voice control. Honestly, I have no idea how this has had basically no news coverage, but I guess now you know. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you use voice assistants? Do you use it on your phone? Do you have like, you know, an install of Windows? Do you use a Mac and use voice assistant there? Do you have some like weird open source software you use on Linux? I would love to know. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you like the video and you want to become one over these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon scribe silly bearer pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... Alexa, end the video.